Oh. Oh, there's a pop right there. Hi, I'm Scout. I'm a professional ballerina with American Ballet Theater, and today I'm gonna to be taking you through my stretching routine. So my stretching routine takes about an hour, and I usually split it up into three different parts. One, before class, to kind of warm my body up and start the day. Two, in the middle of the class, to just have that little extra, like, let's break it open and push forward. And then three, at the end, where I can do my extreme stretching, and I'm warm, and my body's prepared. So stretching and ballet are one and the same and not just because aesthetically it helps my line when I'm dancing. We're always trying to create and give the illusion of a long lengthening stretched out line, but also too, it makes me feel good. If I have that looseness within my joints and especially my hips, I feel more free to move and flow and really just let go when I'm dancing. So my pre-class stretch routine varies day to day. That's probably the longest part of my stretching routine is that morning, that first morning stretch. By taking that extra time, you allow your body to open up naturally and organically without um, hurting it or stressing it. And it's just, it's a nice way to wake up in the morning. I usually like to get to the studio about a half hour before my class starts and that's where I start my stretching routine. So I first start with plopping down to the splits. And I know that kind of sounds extreme, but I have worked my butt off to get the splits. For me, that is not an issue at all. I can easily just flop down into them. And then I just kind of rotate back and forth from forward, middle, and then other side splits. And that's just kind of like that morning, like popping open my hips and getting ready for what's to come. If you're starting to learn how to do the splits or trying to just either gain more flexibility within your hips, I really recommend making sure that you're properly warmed up. Like maybe just do a couple exercises. You could even do like jumping jacks for a minute just to kind of get some blood flow and then don't push yourself too much. Make sure you're supporting yourself. You're never at a moment where there's no hands on the ground or no feet touching the ground. Scoot back a little bit. And then this is just that motion where you have all four points of contact on the ground. This is good even for me to do. You wanna really make sure you have that safety net so you can push into it, but you also have yourself to like prop you in case something does feel bad. And there is uncomfortability and then there's hurt. You go into it and you have that like, oh, sharp. Like any kind of sharp uh, pain that kind of comes out of nowhere and it goes away immediately when you stop that movement, that's a, a no, no pain. But uncomfortable, it's like, okay, we can, we can kind of push through this a little bit. Doing the splits first thing reminds my body that it can turn out from the hips. Turnout is a position in ballet. Our heels are facing each other and the feet are apart and that is proper ballet technique. And this is where ballet almost separates from like something like contemporary dancing. And so by reminding your hips and sitting like doing the splits, something like that, it just reminds and triggers that Okay, here we go. We can do we can do turnout. When I'm doing like all my extreme jumps, like a leap or like a soda shot is what it's technically called. But um it just I I my body already knows what it's doing because I've done that position before. So after I sit in the splits for a little bit, I go to the bar and I do like full and I call it like laundry or something where you like you hang over the bar face forward and it's the best back release. So the forward and back bending that I do with my spine uh, not only wakes it up, but it allows me to carry the position when I'm doing port de bras, which is movements of the arms and dancers like you you see them like they have this beautiful upper body and this is where a lot of our storytelling and movement comes from and finishing the positions so by awakening the spine and reminding it it's like reinstilling that muscle memory of like holding yourself up in that proper ballet technique so after i do a little bit of that i go into my arms and this is usually where like i'll grab the bar behind me and i'll stretch and like open up this chest kind of do my neck movements like i kind of start to focus on getting the shoulders open the back engaged and like the neck starting to move and feel more free and not stiff anymore and that's just like so good for when you're doing stuff like this oh some of the hip openers I do is sitting like with my legs crossed in front of me and leaning forward. And that's kind of opening up that like glute area. And that's just like, I don't like that one at all. <laughs> this is about as much as I can go right now. If I lean forward, I can kind of get into it, but oof, I'm tight right now. I know by the end of class, it'll be a lot better and I'll feel less embarrassed to do this. <laughs> Oh, but this is one of those motions that I think for dancers especially, like this 
seems like it would be counterintuitive to dance, but it's actually allowing like your um, gluteus maximus to like release. And that allows you to have more turnout within your body. So, oh my gosh. Your hips are a ball and socket. So if you just keep stretching it one way, it's gonna be tight on the other side. So it's like getting that whole joint to open up in every single direction. And that allows and creates more space for me to play around with my turnout, my standing leg, my like my working leg. There's a lot of things that I like have difficulty with when we do like it's a step over turn and you have to like lift your leg and you run the jambe around and that to me it's like I struggle with those a little bit but then all of a sudden I notice like if I'm stretching and I'm starting to like okay like really trying to figure out this movement and then all of a sudden it just happens because you have that freedom within your hips and like your movement of your body so after my hip openers that's when I just take a moment to sit down on the ground and like take a little moment to myself I interlace like my hands through my toes and this is when I start to like warm up my feet the blood starts flowing and you have full range of motion within your feet it's like that rotating the skin back and forth where it almost kind of burns and that's actually a really good thing for you. It's um, opening up and releasing the fascia and getting blood flow to that area. So if you even try this on any part of your body and compare it to the other side, you'll notice a difference immediately. But this is definitely like the opening self-massage stuff, which is my favorite part. Oh, oh, got a good little foot pop in there too. When your feet are in point shoes, they're very like, squished together compact like those babies are tight and so if you don't have already this like extra feeling of like each toe that's in your shoe it's just gonna make it harder to stand on one leg do the movements because when you're in point shoes it's so vital and just it needs you need to have awareness of what's happening in there or else you could potentially injure yourself So my mid-class stretching is a lot more leg oriented. I do like stretching, uh, leg up on the bar stretching, and that just helps me with like any classic ballet, ballerina position. Those are just kind of reminding yourself of the positions you can do. And then also when we move into center and start with adagio, like those are absolutely what you're trying to attain. So when I'm standing in center and I'm coming up into adagio, I recreate that position when I'm up and doing the ballet, when I'm doing a movement or if I'm doing something where I kick my leg and then go through. The arch stretch is like you stand on your toes basically and bend over and just kind of like stretch the front of your arch of the foot. Yeah, it's kind of extreme, but it's, I like to do it. <laughs> so then this is the moment where I'm like, okay, feeling good, bars are away. We're starting to get prepared and ready for center. Um, I'll sit down and this is when I strap my point shoes on, tie those babies up. These are definitely like day two and a half point shoes right here. They're perfect. Day two shoes, my homeboys. And then usually just stand up and kind of do some like prancing motion and just like maybe some, again, over the toe stretching. So if I'm not absolutely dead by the end of class, which I normally am, <laughs> I this is like, I just have to go and like take a moment sometimes to just like catch my breath. My post-class routine, I try to keep it simple and just do specific like ballet-esque movements. This is when I will put my leg up on something that is above the ground. And instead of doing like 180 degree splits, it'll be like a little bit more than that, like maybe 200 degree splits. <laughs> All right, now back. Woo. This side's a little bit harder. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit. This is when you can kind of push yourself because your muscles are warm and they're not gonna get injured and like snap because you're cold trying to stretch taffy. Those moments of like uncomfortability in the beginning of class, now they're comfortable and I can go further. Now watch this. Oh yeah. Way more. Uh, not really. <laughs> and then if I remember to put it in my da dance bag, I have a flexi stretcher. It's this really cool uh, strap basically that you hook up to your leg and then you put it around your shoulder and you can lift your leg up behind you. If you're <laughs> um, in like an arabesque position, you're able to like yank it up, but then you don't have to have your hands to like hold anything. So you have that moment of like, oh, I can put myself in the correct port bra position, or you can hold your arms up. Like you can not only do the extreme movement of like your lower body and your legs, but you can hold and incorporate the upper body. So you really are sustaining that position and like 
teaching your body basically of like how you get into it correctly. So I'd always try to end the stretching routine with the very grounding oriented um, movements and exercises. You can't just go up the mountain and like jump off. You gotta like come back down the mountain. This is usually like laying on the back and just like, you know, like something as simple as like happy baby from like yoga, you know? Oh, and then you can go into ninja baby. Hiya! <laughs> it's so nice to just sit in here because you're doing something, but you're not putting any effort into it. <laughs> you can slowly, um, bring the heart rate down, slow the breath down, and maybe stop sweating a little bit. <laughs> Look at that, you see that? I'm literally dripping sweat right now. Oh my goodness. Shiny. <laughs> oh. Stretching reminds me of the extent that I can push my body. Ballet is one of those things where you're trying to do something, you're trying to improve like maybe a position where you have to do more stretching. So you get it one out of 10 times. The next day, because you push yourself, you get it two out of 10 times. Then you get it three out of 10 times. Then you get it seven out of 10 times. To push with intention, intentional stretching in those extreme positions, it's just gonna make it that much better tomorrow. I think one of the things that draws people to ballet the most is that as a dancer, you're constantly working for perfection that will never end. I hope you guys enjoyed my stretching routine. Uh, reminder to stretch safely and to be smart about it, but also push yourself and see you know, how much you know and can become capable of. And I hope to see you guys next time.